In today's video, I'm going to be filming the processing routine for the productive brain. I've been creating this series. Hold on, I'm going to close my door. One second. I've been filming this series for, I think this is episode five now. And so five episodes. And uh, I've kind of just detailed how I'm using the productive brain inside of Notion. And this is my version of the productive brain. I've customized it. I've personalized it a bit. But if you want to see what it's like from the beginning, then you can go back to the beginning of this series. And if you want to download the productive brain, install it and follow along and actually use it alongside me here, like I'm using in these videos, then you can use the link below this video to access the productive brain. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, I'm focusing on processing. And this is one of the many routines that I've built into this template. So the processing routine allows me to take everything that I've captured using this quick capture button right here throughout the day or throughout the week. And it helps me to organize it into the right places. And it tells me exactly what it needs to become organized. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to the process page right out of the gate, you'll notice that I have tasks. I have resources, sub areas, and areas. Now there's nothing in areas and that's because all of my areas are processed. This is at inbox zero essentially. So you can think of the processing section as your sort of inbox and you kind of have to go through these different sections and add information like here in sub areas, it says needs duration. So these sub areas need a duration. Right, so actually let's jump back to tasks though and we'll start with our tasks because we may end up creating some new sub areas and I don't want to uh, skip ahead to sub areas yet. So in tasks, there's quite a few things here but we're gonna get this all figured out pretty quick. In one of the previous episodes, I showed you guys how to import Google Calendar events like these ones that I have here. All these ones with the calendar indicate that it's from Google Calendar. So these have been ported over from Google Calendar. These other ones were created in Notion, but I have a video on how to create a two-way sync in this series just a couple episodes ago. So just go back to the playlist and watch that one if you wanna see how I connected it. Anyways, all of these need something and that's why they're in here. These ones need info and these ones are past due. So let's go ahead and start processing the ones that need info. So film books database video. This one needs some info, it needs a due date. It needs these two blank items here actually. So it needs a due date, we're gonna make that today. And we're gonna make the processing routine video today as well. And then sub areas, these all need sub areas. So the film books database and the film processing routine video, those are going to get added as grow YouTube channel to 30K subscribers. That's the goal with those. So I'm going to make that the sub area and those disappear as you can see as I fill those out. Next we have some consults, a bunch of consults that are ported in directly from Google Calendar. These all have due dates already, but I'm going to enter a sub area for these because that's the info that these ones need. So consult with FR. This one is marketing agency client. I'm gonna link that. Uh, consult with AE. This one is learn from people who are smarter than me because this is actually a consult the reverse way. I'm not actually the one giving the consult. In this case, I'm the one receiving it. So I'm going to check that sub area. And then all of these are, um, let's just say it's called, uh, what's my motive behind this? Uh, consulting or like help help people learn from my experience okay so that will be the sub area that i'm putting that into all of those and then the pay property taxes this one is keep up with personal finances or keep up with business finances. 
and then film 32 tips and tricks for 2024 in Notion. This one is going to be growing the YouTube channel. Okay, and now we're on to past due. These are the next items that need something here. So these also need a sub area, but some of these are past due. So they need a due date update before they need the sub area. So film NFP module, this one, let me see if I filmed this. So this one I haven't filmed yet and this got moved around or it hasn't gotten moved around yet, but it needs to. So I'm going to move this just to next week for now, just so that I have, uh, like I can go back into planning and I can mess with this later, but I'm just getting it out of the way for now. So let's just say this is next week now. Okay. And then you'll notice it jumps to needs info again, and that's because it still doesn't have a sub area. Okay, so we'll add a sub area. Uh, needs info. This one is going to be help 1000 people learn from the NFP method. Uh, this one here is going to be marketing agency client. This one, self development. This one here, this one is spend quality time with family slash friends. And then call expenses. This one is going to be keep up with business finances. This one here. I'm just going through and basically assigning categories to these. Okay, and I might come back through here on these sub areas and tweak these sub areas later, but I'm just trying to get through this for the sake of this video. Uh, so now they all are just past due. Now, the thing is, is some of these have already been completed and I just didn't mark them complete in the system. But if something is past due and you've already completed it, you can actually just mark it as complete here. So I know this one was completed. This one was completed. This one was completed. This one was changed so i need to reassign the due date and once i reassign the due date it's gone and then this one here this due date needs to be reassigned as well so i'll just reassign it to the 22nd and the only reason that it's now still showing is because the action date is in the past so if i move the action date to the future it'll disappear so now that's how i get to inbox zero essentially with a week's worth of tasks and Google Calendar items. And now they're going to be all in the right place when I go to say my planning routine here. In my planning routine, I can now see everything within my system. All right, so let's just go ahead and delete this because this is a duplicate. Uh, but all of this stuff is in the right place and I can move it around however I want to because likely I'm not going to do uh, two priorities in the same day. And I also will probably end up filming this NFP module before I film these. So these are going to have to continue to get pushed back to the end of this week. And I'm going to have to continue filming NFP modules because as I said, uh, these videos are waiting until I finish NFP Notion for Productivity, which is a course on how I build templates like this. If you guys want to stay in the loop with that, subscribe, just follow along. And eventually I'm going to release that course. And if you're astute and you pay attention, I'll release some discount codes for early adopters in these videos at some point. Um, so I would go through here now and I would plan this stuff out and I'd move it around in my actual plan. But the point is it all has the information that it needs outside of the proper action date for some of these to be in the right place. But changing the action date is as simple as just dragging it around, right? So. That is basically how you would process tasks. Now I'm gonna to go to resources. Now with resources, I basically just do everything and then I mark it as reviewed once it's been reviewed. I also have to assign a sub area to these resources. So if you want to, for certain notes, you can assign a sub area um, that's a notebook or you can sign, assign a sub area that's a goal. I haven't talked much about the difference between those. I don't think maybe in some of the earlier modules, I talked about that, but if I go to calibrate in the calibrate section, I have ending goals. So these are goals that have an ending to them. I have ongoing goals. I have notebooks and I have all the active sub areas. So the reason that these aren't in the right place yet is because they aren't processed. They don't have all this information here. 
Once they get this information, they will then be moved into one of these three categories in their rightful place. But right now they still need info. And that's why one, two, three, four, five of these, as you can see, are still in the processing section and they need this information before they get ordered into this system. But I'm, I'm diverting. Basically what I was trying to say is like sub areas can be goals for these resources with these notes, or they can be notebooks, which I have none of yet, but I'm about to create some. I create them within this processing view. So discovering competing factors. This is going to be in a sub area called blue ocean strategy notes okay so i'm categorizing these into blue ocean strategy value innovation this one is blue ocean strategy duality is key where did this one come from ah this one came from uh what is it called? I always forget this one, but it's called the hidden habits of genius notes. So I'll create that as well. So that's just a, basically a sub area on a book. So these will become notebooks later on, but I basically just wanted to create those sub areas out of the gate. Now, the only thing that these need is they need to be pinned if they are something that I'm currently working on, or they might need to be privated if it's a private note. But this is just a feature that I personally use in my system. It's not necessarily something that you have to use in yours. This is just because I do a lot of on screen stuff. But basically, what I want to do here is just mark these as reviewed after I open them up and I review them or read through them or make sure that they, they look good. So the processing portion here for the for the resources is really just to review these and then once i've marked them as reviewed and i've actually looked through them all then they'll disappear right so next we'll go to sub areas and now there's a lot of sub areas here and they all need a duration i've just created these two new ones here the hidden habits of genius notes and the blue ocean strategy notes i'm going to change the type of the well actually well it says needs duration so i'm not going to get ahead of myself We'll add a duration. So these ones are, I would say ending. They have like an end to them, but you know what? Actually, I'm going to keep them ongoing because if I ever come back to these books, I want to, I want to have them in my system. So that's how you know if it's the duration should be ending for certain things. The duration is ending, but for certain things it's ongoing. So a lot of these things are ongoing items. Some people might say for a book for notes, you'd want to make them ending because like, say you want to finish a book by a certain amount of time, but I'm going to make them ongoing because I want to be able to see these again and again. And I can always change the duration later if I want them to end, but I don't have a set timeline in mind that I want to complete them. Once they move down here, I can give them a type because it says needs type. I'll make them notebook and notebook. And then it just says area needed for these. So now I'm going to create an area of self-development, or I'm actually just going to select the area of self-development. Okay. Now spend quality time with family and friends. These need, this needs a duration. So this one is ongoing. It's not going to end. Keep up with business finances. This one is ongoing. It's always going to be around. Help people learn from my experience. Ongoing. Uh, learn from people who are smarter than me. Ongoing. I'm sure marketing agency clients are taken care of. Ongoing. For now, I don't have a deadline for this. I'm actually transitioning away from marketing agency a bit these days, but I still have clients. So I'm taking care of them as of right now. Uh, so for the type on these now, I've got to go through and make them goals because these are all goals. These aren't notebooks. So make these goals. And now they need an area. So this one is family. Keep up with business and finances. This one is, uh, let's, 
let's do productive dude but i can only always go back and add a second one of real estate as well so this one's kind of real estate and a productive dude and then help people learn from my experience this is productive dude learn from people who are smarter than me this one's self-development and ensure marketing agency clients are taken care of this one is green line or actually my DBA for my marketing agency. This is Humways. Okay. So now we have completed tasks, resources, and sub areas. They're all blank. There's no areas here. Those are all blank as well. So that means that processing is complete. So that's how you process in the productive brain. This has just been like a very brief overview of how to do it and just kind of showing how I've been processing my tasks that have kind of built up and become a bit of a backlog. The next logical step from here is to go into plan and to start dragging things around and getting them in the right place. Load balancing, if you have some pry twos and some pry threes, those things can usually uh, get done in the same day. I've talked about this before. I make my priorities based on like how much time something is going to take. Priority one through three are kind of like more so uh, effort driven, I suppose. So like pry one is like the hardest types of tasks. Pry two is like the second hardest and then pry three is the least hard. And these order in just that way. So when I have the most willpower at the beginning of my day, I can complete the pry ones. Meetings get precedence over everything. So if all of this was here, meetings would get the precedence. And that's because meetings are set for a specific time of day. So that is basically how you can move things around, change things like here, I could change this priority level if I wanted to. And I can just drag this stuff around. And these are synced up with Google Calendar. So that's the beauty of this system as well. So as I drag these around, it will change the time on my calendar. It will change the name. It will change all those sorts of things. And it won't actually change the name. Uh, I, I take that back actually, because I, I set it so that it doesn't change the name for other clients um, for these, because I've had to abbreviate these for uh, the privacy of clients and also the privacy of my mentors. So this has basically just been like processing and then like a little bit of planning. I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next episode of this plan with me series.